So in this video, I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that's talk about spoilers. So if you're somebody who, you know, is really interested in seeing the watches, you don't want to know anything beforehand, this is your warning to click off the video, come back later afterwards. I'm going to talk about a ton of spoilers in this, so go watch the movie first, then come back, join me in the comment section down below, let me know what you thought. And that is your warning. So anybody who doesn't care about spoilers, anybody who's already seen this movie, let's get into it. So going into The Watchers, I didn't know anything about this movie. I just knew that it was a bunch of people standing in a box and there was something mysterious looking at them through a mirror every night. And I knew that it was by M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Shauna Shyamalan. I was kind of interested to see where she could go with this because, as we all know, M. Night Shyamalan movies are a total hit or miss for a lot of people. It's an acquired taste. Some people hate him, some love him. And the only other thing I knew about this movie is that it was based on like a best selling book. And it's pretty sad that I've never read that book, but I can also already conclude that the book is probably 10 times as good. So when this movie starts, you're following Mina, played by Dakota Fanning, and the whole movie takes place in Ireland. And immediate red flag to me in the way this movie tells a story is I don't even know why she got to the forest in the first place. She's like tasked with moving or selling this parrot or something. It's kind of a red flag. You're traveling through an uncharted territory. You don't know anybody. And for some reason, she just says, oh, you know, whatever, throw caution in the wind. Let's travel to the forest. And by the time she's heading to the forest, you don't really know anything about Mina as a character. You just know that her mom passed away about 15 years ago. And you only know that because she keeps listening to this audiobook over and over again on repeat. So you'd assume she's traumatized, she misses her, all that. One of the main reasons I wanted to watch this movie is it had M. Night Shyamalan's name attached to it. And the fact his daughter's working on it. So, you know, whatever you feel about that guy, like me, I think he's a huge hit or miss, like a mixed bag in my opinion. I don't like a lot of his stuff, but I always respect the shit out of what he's trying to do. It's at a time where directors don't take any risks. I always feel like at least the premise of his movies are very original, so I give him a pass most of the time. So the first thing you're going to notice about this movie, obviously, is the way this movie looks. I think this movie has a very cool picture, like cinematically, like it's a very clear picture. It's crisp. It's very ominous. It takes place in the middle of the forest. I think it's a great atmosphere to have a movie made. And the real reason I point out the fact that his daughter was the one who directed this is just like M. Night Shyamalan's movies, for some reason, there's like always something totally off with his movies for me. Like, when I watch his movies, he can have, like, the coolest premises ever. Like, just this movie. You have people in a box in the middle of the forest. You have, like, these creatures outside. Don't know what's going on. You as a viewer, you're, like, completely in the dark. You don't know where this movie's going to go. For some reason, this movie just tonally has no tension at all. Like, watching this movie feels like there's no stakes to it at all. You never really feel like anybody's going to die. Don't feel like the monsters are that threatening. I don't know if it's the way he films stuff or the way she films stuff. Just like a lot of the movies involved with that name. Just devoid attention. Doesn't really have anything going for it in that regard. You just never feel like there's any stakes to these characters. For as scary of an environment as you would believe they're in when you describe it on screen. You know, it's like you just never feel like anybody's going to die. You never feel like the monsters are going to do anything important. It's like the way it's filmed, the way the characters talk, it was just completely devoid of tension. I don't know how they managed to do it. It's like a master class, honestly. And the reason that's so important to me is at its core, this is a very, very simple story. When you have these people trapped in a box in the middle of the forest, monsters outside that come every night. You're on a very small scale of like what you can do to create tension, what you can keep us interested in, because as a general story, there's not a whole lot going to it. It's kind of like a mystery. What's going on? Why are we here? And when you have no tension or anything like that, you just find yourself like a lot of these movies. You kind of just don't give a shit what happens to the characters. As for the characters in this movie, you're definitely going to notice that these characters are a giant trope. Like every character in this movie is a little bit different so that they kind of cover all the bases. They're all equally stupid in their own way, but especially the main character, the characters in this movie are incredibly unbelievable. The entire concept of what all of the characters in this movie are going to experience, especially the main girl, completely asinine. Just think about it. Like you have a girl driving in the middle of the forest. They end up in this box. You have these creatures watching them in the middle of the night. This is like a premise that if you were involved in it, you would be like, what the fuck is going on? Like you'd have no idea what's going on in this. And like, Nobody seems to give a shit or judge this or question this at all in this movie, especially the main character. Starting with the beginning of the movie, you have the main character, she drives into the woods. Again, this is uncharted territory. It's not on a map. Nobody knows about this forest. They mention this exclusively. So as a main character, you know help's not coming. Your car dies, your cell phone dies, you're stranded. She walks around like all day and night. She's looking for help. Kind of seemingly doesn't give a shit about the fact that she's inevitably going to die. She's trapped in the woods. Like you never for once think her character's ever scared of death. You never think she's not going to get a way out of it. She's just kind of talking to the parrot like, oh yeah, let's make our way back to the car. I'll find a way to fix it. It's like, it's like no, like you're going to die. Like you don't give a shit. And when you get to that scene in the trailer where she's bumbling around in the forest, it's night. The old lady finds her, tells her like, you have five seconds. Come on, get in the box. We're going to close it. You know, there's no resistance to the idea at all. Like she gets in there. There's like this box. They tell them there's like these creatures that watch them every night. You have these four people who are just completely complacent. It's like to the point where like, they just don't give a shit. Like, oh, there's something we do. We're a bunch of jesters. It's like, if I was the main character and I stumbled upon this forest, I was trapped. I find this box. They tell me, yeah, man, just entertain these watchers for a couple of nights. Like, 
no, like that's not going to happen. Like I'm going to be like, I'm not staying here all night. Like I'll probably get eaten alive by the monsters. Like there's just no resistance in this movie of any common sense. It's like, it's a hundred percent one of those movies where they had to write the characters dumb purposely to progress the plot. And they don't even hide it because if any character did anything reasonable, anything questioning of like what's going on, this movie would be at a standstill and you'd be sitting at the car two hours from now. So it's just, it's one of those movies that's just offensively dumb the way they write the characters. I really didn't think any of the acting in this movie was very like phenomenal or anything. I mean, it was like okay passable, but I don't really know if they have much to work with in terms of a script or anything, so I will give them a pass in that regard. The main character, Mina, played by Dakota Fanning, is a super generic character. Obviously, she's like kind of this emotionally numb character. She doesn't really question anything. She's completely accepting of this like ludicrous shit that's going on. Doesn't really question staying in the box all night. But the honorable mention to me for the worst acted character in this movie by far is the old lady, Madeline, who like lets her into the box. So I get that she's still getting work, but... I mean, between Taro and this, this is two movies this year. I feel like she was damn near unwatchable every scene she was in. I mean, she just plays the most generic tropey role of the old lady who happens to have an answer to everything. And it's really not the fact that her character knows everything. I get that. That's a trope. We've seen that movies a dozen times. And I don't know if it's her acting style. It's the way they keep writing her characters. I'm not familiar with enough of her work to differentiate. But between Taro and this, this is two movies in a row where her characters, they cannot say a single sentence. It's just a normal sentence. It's like... Everything she says on screen, no matter what it's about, is like this enlightened monologue. Like, it's just everything about it. For example, if you have a character in this movie walking around and they look on the ground and they see a chewed piece of gum and they say like, Hey, Madeline, like, what is that? A chewed piece of gum? A chewed piece of gum. We've been chewing gum as a civilization for 5,000 years. The monsters have chewed gum to strengthen their jaws. It's like, dude, every single sentence doesn't have to be like a rambling monologue. Like every single sentence with this character. And The Watchers is one of those movies that just has like a ton of rules just for the sake of having rules so that the characters will act a certain way. You know, it's an exposition dump. There's no rhyme or reason for the rules besides the fact that if they didn't have these rules, nobody would abide by them and you'd have no movie. But like some of the rules are like, you can't go out after night. You can't go in the burrows, aka like the ditches in the ground from the trailer. You can't turn your back to the watchers. These are all disclosed by the old lady because they're the rules. Gotta obey the rules. Can't break the rules. But the problem really comes from the fact that characters break every single one of these rules. Like immediately. Every time they're told a rule, like, hey, don't go out after night. They go out after night. They kind of describe these monsters as being these like inescapable monsters. If you go out, nothing survives the watchers. Well, conveniently, two characters are stranded outside at night, one of the scenes for like, I don't know, five minutes, yelling at the top of their lungs to be let in. The monsters don't do anything. So it's like, You've established a groundwork here where the monsters are inescapable. They're this super threatening presence. You don't want to disturb the watchers and they seemingly don't do shit. They're just kind of AFK in the forest. When you're first introduced to the watcher design, I guess it's cool enough. Like it looks kind of like a zombie. It's like a mimic of something. It's, you know, it's plausible. It's, like, oh, it's kind of all right. And like the more you see it and they keep fleshing it out and they kind of give you details, like the stupider and like the cornier got like, there's this scene where there's like a hundred naked dudes who all look the exact same on the beach that like the five people in my theater and me were all laughing at it was so corny. The CGI was so bad. About halfway through this movie, the audience's patience is wearing thin. You know, it's the same thing keeps happening every single night with the watchers. You're kind of wondering like, where's this movie going to go? Because they keep kind of telling you the same rules over and over again. Nothing's really happening in that regard. And you're just kind of like, where are we going to go from here as a story? And like conveniently, there's just a valve. You mean to tell me these people have been living in this cube for like, you know, three to six months and they haven't found this. It's like a hundred square foot cube. Like it's like, it's like the laziest exposition dump of how to get out of this scenario ever. It's like so stupid. My eyes were basically glued to the back of my skull when they were explaining this scene. And when you do get to the very end of this movie, you get to the major twist they've been setting up for the entire movie's runtime. I have to say it's probably the single most predictable twist in the history of cinema. I'm not even joking. Like I was almost offended that they went with the twist. I thought it was going to be a red herring. It was so predictable. And when they kind of lay that on you as a twist, I was like, did no, like, did nobody know this? Like it was, I'm telling you, it was the single most predictable twist I can remember all year. But the major twist in this movie is that the old lady who's spending all the time in the box with them, giving them all these like, creepy rules for absolutely no rhyme or reason, is actually a mimic and a changeling. She's one of them. So it's like she's getting them to play along and study them because she's in the box with them. She's keeping them interested by lying to them that they can't leave. They can't go outside at night, things like that. They will abide by the rules. You never saw it coming. I've already disclosed, like, it's impossible to leave this forest. You'll never get away from the Watchers. They randomly just hear a video log, and it's like, yeah, go take my boat, man. It's like in the east of the forest. And one night, they're like, yeah, let's just go get the boat. And they just literally run and take the boat and leave the forest. Like, it's like there's no opposition or anything. And you're watching this, and you're saying, well, how did the old lady leave? Like, it was in the middle of the sunlight. She can't leave in the sunlight. The Watchers can't leave during the daylight. And they go, there must be something different about her character. She must be a daywalker. And it's like, 
pretty much sums up the entire premise of the movie. It's like stupid as shit and there's like no rhyme or reason to say, man, must have been. That's why. And unfortunately for the viewer, that's actually not the ending of the movie. This rambles on for another 15 to 20 minutes. And I have to say the ending of this movie is like hilariously terrible. One of the worst endings I've seen all year easily where like you have her show up to her house and she's kind of like trying to take her face, like take her body. Because she is a changeling, she's a mimic, and you're like, oh shit, we're finally to the point of a big conclusion, like there's going to be a big confrontation. But unfortunately, the main character, you know, in the fairy or the mimic, whatever we're going to call it, they just get into a big like philosophical debate, you know, about what it means to be a monster, what it means to be viewed as a monster, what it means to be a human. They kind of connect on a level if they both feel like they're outcasts. And, you know, eventually the mimic or the fairy, or whatever you're going to call it, just kind of flies off and says like, I'll be seeing you, Mina. It's like... It was just a big heart to heart moment, you know, where the power of love prevailed, power of storytelling failed. I don't know. When I started this video, I was kind of going to get into a bunch of specifics, get into my reasons why, but I kind of realized about halfway through this review, it's already long. It probably could have been like 30 minutes longer if I would have went into every single specific of stupidity in this movie. The acting in this movie is well below average, in my opinion, for what you'd expect going into it. There's basically no tension, no mystery to this movie, the way it's filmed. The big twist of this movie is predictable as shit, and the ending of the movie is absolutely terrible. And anything your imagination could possibly think up and conjure about where this premise is going to go, what would make it interesting, I can all but promise you it's about 10 times as interesting as what we actually got, because this movie's dog shit. This is easily a contender for one of the worst movies of the year. This movie had basically no redeeming qualities and nothing going for it, damn near unwatchable. If you made it this far in the video, I'm going to assume you have no interest watching this movie or that you already went and saw it. So if you did, comment down below, let me know what you thought, or let me know if you read the book and you think the book is significantly better than this sounds. If you haven't subscribed already, what the hell are you waiting for? More new releases, more scary stuff to come. As always, that's all I got in this video. Peace.